for joining me for my May bullet journal setup. If you're new here, I'm Raksha and I make videos about creativity and well-being. I believe that bullet journal art can be therapeutic and that we can use our journals for fun, mindfulness and mental health. Today's theme is inspired by Zentangle art. Zentangle pictures are created by combining structured shapes and is meant to be easy and relaxing. It's usually done on a small square piece of paper that you can keep rotating and adding patterns to without knowing what the end result is going to look like. So I didn't prepare this month's theme like I normally would. I just hit record and got started without an idea of what the final designs would end up looking like. I decided to write up May in big letters and I coloured in the background with a light brown acrylograph pen and a light bluey green. I was thinking of filling up the page around the letters with Zentangle designs but then decided to just fill in the letters instead. The first step is to divide the area into segments. So I drew a big line across the middle of the M stroke and added more lines randomly to split up the area that I'd be doodling in. The first segment I filled up with triangles and rather than making the triangles meet at the tip I had them overlap slightly. In the next segment I drew three lines from one side to the other and added this three line design all around it, turning the journal to have them flow in different directions. I filled up another with some big dots and smaller dots. I filled up another one with circles of different sizes. You can fill the segments with any shapes or patterns you can think of. It kind of reminds me of being young at school, daydreaming while doodling in classes. I didn't usually draw pictures of things, I usually found it more relaxing to draw patterns like this. I left some segments unfilled because I preferred the look of having some empty spaces. I created my segments in the A and then thought I would hold off on filling it out because it might look quite nice as it is with just the lines. So I moved on to the Y, drawing in my divider lines to create the segments and filling them in with patterns. It would actually be fun and therapeutic to just fill up an entire page with these patterns, get immersed in the process without worrying about the outcome, which is what the Zentangle method should be about. But it's still relaxing nonetheless and comes together quite nicely as a bullet journal theme. It might be worth filling up a random page or piece of paper with some patterns before you start your spreads anyway. Enjoy the free therapy and then use some of those patterns when setting up your spreads. I then added some black lines to the letters, like how you would use a drop shadow to make the letters pop a bit more. Finally, I ripped up some craft paper from my Archer and Olive notepad to stick in the corners of the spread as a finishing touch. I thought that the craft paper would complement the brown and warm blue colours that I'd chosen for the lettering. I then added a border around the page to bring it all together using a 08 Sakura fine liner. I experimented with some washi tape in those colours too, but in the end I decided that I preferred the spread without anything else. Over on the next page I used my grid spacing ruler to divide the page into two rows and drew a faint horizontal line across the page. I'm going to use the faint line as a guide to draw some rectangles between the lines with some white space around it. These spaces are going to be dedicated to looking back on the previous month. I did a review spread in my last monthly setup and found it really helpful using these prompts to look back on the previous month before moving on to the next. 
so I thought I'd do that again this month. It kind of makes you process where you are and what's happened already and then realign with what you want to focus on. It makes you feel less like time is escaping you and just more in control of your time. I coloured in a strip across the middle of the page in my two colours. It was the first time I'd used the blue from my warm fall set and I had to stop to shake and reactivate it a lot more than I usually do. Maybe some of the pens need it more than others or need more vigorous shaking, I'm not quite sure. Has anyone else experienced this with acrylograph pens? While I fill in my strip, I thought I'd take the opportunity to tell you a bit more about how this method began. Once there was a couple called Rick and Maria. Maria sold her illustrations at art fairs and customers often told her how much they would love to be able to do what she did. If only they had the talent, time, space or money. Rick and Maria were touched by how many people yearned to experience their own creative fulfillment. Then one day in 2003, Rick saw Maria immersed in the process of adding patterns behind a large letter. They talked about how she was feeling, and she explained that the process felt effortless, timeless, selfless and immersive, what we would now call being in flow state. Rick, who'd been practicing meditation, said to her, you're basically describing meditation. They remembered the deep yearning from people who wanted to be able to do something creative, but didn't have the time or expertise to pursue it, and thought maybe they could enjoy learning how to draw these simple patterns to express themselves creatively in a stress-free way. They booked themselves a lovely B&B for a weekend and discussed all of their ideas, recording all of their conversations in a notebook. They described the patterns as tangles and eventually came up with the idea to call it the Zentangle method. Apparently like their personalities, where he's the zen and she's the tangle. Anyway, sorry for going on, I thought it was quite a sweet story so I thought I'd take a moment to share it while working on my own zentangle patterns. And I really like how they talk about the method giving people a way to create something unexpected and beautiful in about 15 minutes, even when people believe they can't draw. I added my reflection questions on some craft paper. The first prompt for the review is to simply describe March, where I'll think of one word to describe it and add some points explaining why. Then I have what went well, because it's so easy to miss the good stuff otherwise. What did I learn? And finally, what could be better next month? Next, I have my monthly log. I drew some thick borders again with the 08 Sakura fine liner. On the left hand side of the page, I wrote up May. I coloured in the letters and added my Zentangle patterns within the letters. This page is going to be dedicated to writing up what I'll be focusing on in May. The right hand page is for my days of the week where I'll put in events and key dates for May. I added some ripped up craft paper to the corners to complete the spread and completed the black border on top of the craft paper. Next up, my simple things list. I'm using my simple things stencil to lay out the list. Supplies are linked in the description as always. I colored the headers in with my two colors and decided that I'll try and keep these spreads simple since there'll end up being a lot of text on it. I added May to the middle of the circle, completely missing the middle as you can see. I think I just really got into freestyling and not planning, so you'll see that a lot of things aren't perfect in my spreads. My simple things list for this month is hang fairy lights in the garden, enjoy a mindful morning tea, put my winter clothes away, have a do nothing day, make a fruit salad to enjoy eating on a sunny day, 
So this is where you get to see the reality of not planning my spreads. At this point, I was feeling a bit tired and indecisive and didn't know what to do next. I added a black border around the page. I coloured in the space below the border with my two colours. I added more craft paper. I ripped off the first piece of craft paper. And finally, I stuck down a piece of craft paper that went across the whole width of the page. I thought I'd show you all of this just in case you ever have these moments too, when things just aren't working out or you don't know how to fix something. You don't need to feel disheartened or feel like you can't do something. We all go through this and it's often hard to realise that because we only ever see finished products. So I thought I would just share the process and share that it's not always perfect. Next I have my growth list. If you're new here, on my monthly growth list I usually add a book I want to read, a class I want to take and something I want to do. So thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. To explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in creativity. There's a class for pretty much anything you could be interested in, whether it's creativity, mindfulness or productivity. Last month, the class I took was Creative Writing Bootcamp, Start a Brand New Story. In the class, novelist Myla Goldberg goes through five exercises to stretch your brain in different directions to get you thinking and writing creatively. I love how she shows you to use your curiosity about the world and turn it into creative writing. The exercises show you how to tap into things that are inside of you and blend them with the things that you observe outside of you in the world. You can then use these to fuel your creativity and write unique stories. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity and take this class and it won't cost you anything during the trial. The platform is curated for learning so there aren't any ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can follow wherever your creativity takes you. If you decide to continue after your trial, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So I have my space for the three things that I'll read, learn and do in May for growth. And I added my craft paper and a black border so the two pages work well together side by side. And I couldn't resist adding this quote. I am still learning, said by Michelangelo at the age of 87, reminding us that we're never done learning. Finally, we have my first weekly spread for March. I'm using my grid spacing ruler to set this up nice and fast, dividing the page into halves, faintly in pencil. I then drew some boxes within each of the pencil lines, leaving the top half of the left-hand page blank for a title. I drew a big M to represent May and coloured it in. I then added my tangles inside the M. I love how it kind of looks like the first letter when you're starting a new chapter of a book. I added some blue rectangles to the tops of the boxes and wrote up my days of the week. I will of course share these and any other spreads that I do throughout the month over on Instagram, so follow me over there if you want to see more. If you're new to my channel, I've got a whole playlist full of useful bullet journal content and a playlist dedicated to mindfulness and well-being as well, so feel free to check that out. I'll link it in the description box below. Here's the final flip through.
Thanks for watching and I'll see you over on Instagram or in my next video.